um, as part of this series, what we're trying to do is cover uh, common uh, pests, uh, part of our role as master gardeners to um, provide education and useful information to the public that we serve is uh, pest management and using uh, responsible pest management guidelines and advice, which is um, we use the Virginia Tech Pest Management Guide. But house plants, particularly when you bring them indoors uh, and in the wintertime during a dry environment, you'll get um, you're going to notice mealybugs, aphids. They're either going to have come in from over, you know, summering outdoors, or they're going to come in from the soil. Um, everyone typically has a, a di more difficult time with their house plants and pests. So we're going to talk about aphids today. Uh, so um, Pat is going to talk about aphids. So okay. over to you, Pat. Okay. Let me see. Let's see. Um, you should see your slides here. Uh, let's see. Did we get them? Did that yep. work? Yep, okay. it did. Okay. And you just need to make a full screen. There you, you, okay. yeah, there you go. All right, we'll, be, we'll be talking about our pest of the week, which is the aphid. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the insect itself, its habitat, and then what what would be some of the better ways or some treatment options for it. Um, so the aphid is a very broad family. Um, it's also known as um, the plant louse or the green fly or possibly my favorite insect name, the ant cow. Um, whichever way you, whatever name you, you know it by, it's a, it's a very, um, voluminous pest. Um, some, there are more than 4,000 types of aphids, which is a pretty large number. Um, some of the more common um, aphids that you would find in Virginia are the white pine, the rose aphid, anybody that's ever grown roses is probably familiar with that, the giant bark aphid, which is coincidentally the largest aphid in the United States. The green peach aphid, which is a chronic uh, problem with uh, orchards and commercial uh, products. The chrysanthemum aphid and the woodley adler aphid, which is common in areas, it's um, specific to the silver maple, which in areas like uh, in Fairfax, for instance, the older sections of Fairfax, they had a lot of silver maples, that would be, that would be prevalent there. So the life cycle of, we'll talk a little bit through about the life cycle of the aphid because that's why it's so dominant. They are very, um, um, they're good breeders. They, um, they have an unusual and a complex life cycle that allows them to build up enormous populations in a very short period of time. Um, so in the spring, they start, um, you know, emergence, they become, uh, active and mobile, they start eating, they start uh, populating, and then they overwinter as eggs. So um, they, they don't see much activity during the winter at that time. They also produce a honeydew, which is a sticky residue, and that attracts, that causes other problems on its own. It attracts other pests and it can cause a fungal um, infection. Um, the aphids feed on the soft stems and the branches, the new growth, and um, so, and that's the um, most delicate part of the plant. It can cause severe deformation um, it, it's a, of, of your plant. Um, it's, it's a common pest of indoor and outdoor, you know, uh, which is one of the challenges if you're bringing your indoor plants outside for the summer and you have that outside, you risk bringing it back in, or if you have your indoor plants are infected and you bring them outside, you risk infecting your outside plants. So you wanna keep a good eye on what, what might be affecting your uh, plants. Uh, the aphids can also, the honeydew can cause a sooty mold, which causes your plants to look bad. It doesn't really affect their health, but it's certainly um, not something you, you like to have on your plants. Um, this is what the aphids look like 
when they're flying around and getting ready to attack your um, your plants and uh, your indoor gardens. Um, so that's the adult and uh, she's getting ready to launch and, and go uh, find another uh, place to feed. Um, so the, the aphids, they can be found indoors and outdoors. They are a very common problem on indoor plants. Um, and the honeydew, is, which is what most people notice, which is the sticky residue, uh, is pretty much the first sign. That's the first thing you'll notice about before you even see uh, the bug itself. Um, indoor treatments, there's a number of treatments for indoor. You can wash them uh, gently. You can hang a sticky trap, sort of like a fly trap or a tape, a double-sided tape um, to catch them as they fly. Um, you can make your own uh, soap treatment, which is a mix of water and a, a gentle, a natural soap that has no, um, not detergent, it's a soap so that it'll um, apply uh, to the coating of the outside the coating of the bug. Neem oil is the com very common uh, recommended uh, treatment. And uh, secondarily, you might want to remove some heavily damaged pieces from the inside. Um, gardeners should avoid the use of insecticide, well, especially inside and outside, because that's not really going to uh, affect the aphid itself, but it will affect other sections of your garden. Um, uh, in outdoor and indoor treatments, so removing by hand, you can spray them with water. If I was doing indoor pants, I would recommend, if you can possibly, to isolate that plant. Um, you don't want your treatment to knock the, the bugs onto other sections of your uh, other plants that you have nearby. Um, with if you are if you take them outside, you can spray them with a stream of water to knock everything off. Otherwise, inside you want to wipe them um, with your with hand by hand. Um, you can, some experts recommend using tape to get a lot of them. That'll stick sort of like rub down through, but you'll have to be really careful and use a soapy hand wash. You want to be sure to put all, anything you clip, any tape, any materials you use in a, in a bucket or a container to keep separate um, from uh, other plant materials. Um, there's sprays available. Um, you can make a soap and water spray that you spray on. Um, again, you want to avoid the vegetable oils. Neem oil is a naturally occurring pesticide. Um, uh, it's found from the uh, found in the seeds of the neem tree. Um, it comes in a lot of forms. A spray is one. It can come in a powder. Um, a wettable powder, any any sort of thing. It's a very um, highly recommended product that can be used indoors and out. Another product that uh, you might want to try, it's a very uh, low toxic. It's um, an essential oils. That was something that I hadn't realized. It um, It's really recommended as a preventative more than it is of a treatment if you already have an infection. It's the scents, much like uh, when you put something on to um, defer the um, to, for the deer to get the deer away, it has a you use oils that have strong scents. There, the studies don't really show any one particular oil that's better than another. Many sites recommend uh, lavender. Uh, others are peppermint. Um, again, it has to do with the scents, and it's uh, something that you could experiment with if that's something you are interested in. Uh, if nothing else, it would it'd be a good preventative uh, to spray every now and then on, on the plants. It doesn't hurt, and it uh, would keep some of those pests from landing there. Um, you probably wouldn't use natural predators on an indoor set, but on the outside, particularly in uh, large settings, uh, natural predators are very often used. Uh, birds, uh, lacewing bugs, ladybugs, uh, all love to have uh, meals of uh, aphids. Um, ants are sort of a special case. Um, they uh, 
really I'm just touching on that, but that could be a whole subject on itself. It turns out that they are partners in, in plant management uh, and the uh, ants like to eat the, um, the, uh, I'm sorry, I just thought, I lost my train of thought there. The ants eat the honeydew that the uh, aphids generate and they travel around with the aphids on their back and the ants are also responsible for um, moving them to other plants. So you wanna be careful if you see ants in your, uh, starting to make a home in your plants, if you've moved them outside especially, um, you, you really need to double check for aphids. So in summary, the aphids, they're small but mighty. Um, you wanna pay attention to your plants for early evidence of aphids. Uh, try to nip it in the bud early because they can really take over. You should treat them immediately if you find them to minimize the damage and any other infestations. And the treatments that are uh, available and recommended are generally not toxic, but um, getting a full scale um, infestation out of one of your plants can be uh, laborious. Um, the approach for treatment is the same indoors and out, really. It is a, really just a matter of scale. And that's really what we have. Now, there, there was one more in my research. There's one, so, um, so at the end of this, there's a lot of good resources. Aphids um, have generated a lot of study and research. Uh, Virginia Tech has a very nice uh, information sheet um, and almost um, every state and university and a local co-op has extensive information on the aphids treatments that are um, good for the area that you're in. There was one other kind of aphid that was just touched on where you can actually get root aphid and they're common in, um, they're a little bit more common in house plants than outside. What's interesting about them is that most of the treatments that treat aphids on on the upper part of the plant don't really aren't as effective on the on root aphids so you have to uh, work through a different strategy um, again there's natural predators which is an outdoor treatment you can use nematodes which can be used on indoors and outdoors and you just have to be very careful with the soil and not to spread that way okay so I'm, if there's any questions we can Ask, answer any questions, or I can turn it back over to. Hey, we do. <laughs> we do have a question uh, okay. from from Sue here um, on indoor plants. She says she uses a Q-tip dipped in, I assume, rubbing alcohol to pick yeah. off the the eggs. And the um, is that okay? Um, there wasn't. I didn't. Uh, when the research I found, I didn't really see any evidence that alcohol was recommended or generally utilized for that. I think um, it I looks know. like if you want something that, um, that maybe you want to put a soapy solution on your Q-tip, that might be a better uh, material to um, ad address the eggs and everything that because it, it will cling more towards to their uh, outside their skin or I guess the shell of the egg. Yeah, I, when I, what, you know, with the, with the alcohol, and you're right, it is rubbing alcohol, but it just, I just, you know, lightly wipe it over where the eggs are and they all stick to the Q-tip. Well, I think if it's not hurting your plant, I, I think that's the key is you don't want something that's toxic to your plant. If, if as long as you uh, can see that you're making an effective, uh, you know, reduction in the aphid colony. I think that that seems fine. I just didn't see anything about that particular okay. method in, in any of the recommendations. I okay. have seen the rubbing alcohol uh, Q-tip recommended for mealybugs. And so if it doesn't harm the plants with the mealybugs and it's working on the aphids, it may be, may be okay. 